Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit. Can you believe we're in double digits in June, June the 10th, 6.05 a.m. 2024. It's good to see all of you this morning. Uh, this morning's title uh, is One and Done, colon, Waiting and Watching. One and Done, Waiting and Watching from Romans chapter 12, verse 1. So weather for today, 76 degrees on the way to 90 for a high 20% chance of rain this afternoon, going to 40% this evening, light north to northeasterly winds. So kind of a stock standard summer day around Beaumont, Texas. And uh, so just a word, well, since we share our lives together in Christian fellowship, uh, got to tell you what happened to me last night. Uh, the old phrase is, you play, you pay. Well, I paid last night. I uh, had a great hunt last night. About 9 o'clock-ish, the hunt was over, and I went to collect my uh, game for the evening. And I am on the back side of Pawtucket, Idaho. You hear me? I mean, way out there. And uh, I cranked the Jeep to go get the uh, to go get the game animal, the uh, animal. And uh, I got a flat on the back left of that Jeep on the back side of Egypt in the slop, glop, and goo. And so by the time I got home last night, it did not take long to <laughs> spend the night. But I just wanted to share that with you. And some days are better than others. And some days are just days. So, one and done, waiting and watching, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Being a Christian is in some ways like being a round of ammo. In one instance, Jesus says, and, and let me explain that to you, you can only, a round of ammo goes off one time, right, until you reload it. But the point of the story is a round of ammo goes off one time. Now, let's take that apart and put it back together. Jesus said, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever seeks to save his life will lose it but whosoever would lose his life for my sake will surely find it okay so that's what he says in one instance in another instance he says take up his cross daily well is there some kind of problem with the scripture no he's teaching the same concept with two different applications one time he's saying take up your cross daily as a way of life in another place he says it as if one time a literal laying down of your life that can, you can only do one time. So you, as a believing Christian, are committed to being used, and if need be, to lay down your life for him, but you don't ever know where or when until he shows you. Being a Christian, one life to live here on this earth, and then you're done, so you get all you can from it for his glory and for the blessing of his people. Waiting and watching to see where the Lord uh, tells you to use your bullet on his behalf. Listen to what Paul said, and then let's talk. Paul said, and you can't read this verse in anything but King James, Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Beseech is a strong word. It means to beg, to adjure, to plead, in the strongest way possible. And he says, by the mercies of God, and that literally means in the original language, in light of, by means of, or on account of the mercies of God. Now, you and I can't think of anything greater than the mercies of God, can we? And he says to us, I beseech you by the mercies of God, present yourselves as a gift, as a gift. Your bodies, everything that you have, everything that you are, your life, as a living sacrifice. Now, how well does this line up with what Jesus said? Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. And he also said, take up your cross daily and follow me. Well, when Paul coins the phrase, a living sacrifice, he's saying something that has never been said before because a sacrifice is something that dies. And yet to be a living sacrifice is a new thing. You are a sacrifice, yet you still live, and you live a sacrificial way of life up to, and perhaps including, your own death for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are to be holy, acceptable to God. Present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of worship or service. Now, I love the word reasonable, and our constitution and our legal system is built on beyond a reasonable doubt and it causes us to continually think about the word reasonable 
Paul is saying here to present yourself as a living sacrifice, something that is already dead but is still walking around serving the Lord until such time as we're called on for that ultimate sacrifice. That is our reasonable act of worship. My goodness, what is it that makes that a reasonable response? The sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of himself to atone for our sins and to reconcile us to God. It is a response of loving him back when he demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Greek word for reasonable act of worship is liturgia, liturgy, worship. It's what could be and what should be expected of me and expected of you as believers. And because you love him, you want him to be glorified. Because you love him, you want his people to be blessed. And because you love him, you can do no other. One more time. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, a reasonable act, your reasonable act of worship. Let's do it, shall we? One and done, maybe one time, every day, yes to both. Let me pray for us. Father, we love you. We thank you for demonstrating, commending your love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Help us to love you back with everything that we have and everything that we are. Lord, help us to realize that that is nothing but a reasonable act of worship in light of what you've done. Lord, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for a new day of life, and we thank you for a chance to be co-laborers together with Christ when we deserved hell. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us first, and we pray these things in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, and may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you, I'm praying for you, and I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.